Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a PHP web page that utilizes CRUD operations. Now, if you're not familiar, real quick, CRUD is an acronym that stands for Create, Read, Update, and Delete. So by the end of this tutorial, you should have a working website that is able to perform these actions. If that's something you wanna learn how to do, let's hop right on into the tutorial here. Okay, so as you can see on my server, I have PHP version 7.4.3 installed. I'm gonna assume that you also have a modern stable version of PHP on your system, as well as a MySQL or some other type of database that you have access to where we can store all of the data. I'm gonna be using MySQL, but something like Maria database would work as well. Okay, so to start off here in the root of my website directory, I have one single file. It's an index.php file. And let's just take a look at that real quick to see what we're working with. Um, inside the body of our HTML structure, we have basically two elements. We have a header element here and a paragraph element here. There's no functionality at this point. And I do also wanna point out that in the header of the, uh, the HTML file, we are including the bootstrap library. So this is gonna uh, pull in some extra CSS functionality that'll make um, the user interface a little bit prettier than it would without this, this access to this library. Okay, so with that said, um, let me show you what the website looks like. It, right now it just looks like this. I'm running under the domain name site1.xyz. And I think the first thing that we should do is to create our database and the table that's going to be storing um, all of our data. So let's do that right now. I'm gonna be uh, doing all of this on the command line. If you wanna use something like PHP in my admin, that's fine, uh, but feel free to follow along. What we're gonna do is log into the MySQL command line with the MySQL command, dash U for the user, Tony is my username, and then dash P for password. So you guys are gonna see my password quite a few times throughout this tutorial, so I'm just gonna tell you what it is. So my password is this is my password. Okay, so we are now on the MySQL command line. And what we wanna do is first create our database. So we can do that with a create database command. And we're gonna call our database PHP demo. Okay, now let's use that database with the use command, use PHP demo. And that's just gonna save us from having to type in uh, PHP demo every single time. And there's actually only one, only one command that we have to type here, and that's to create our table. So uh, this is a good point to explain kind of what we're gonna be doing. So we're gonna be storing information about um, somebody's name and the score that they got. So think of a score as like a grade, a percentage. So Tony got a 75%, John got a 95%, something like that. So we're gonna have three columns though, and let me explain that uh, when we execute the command. So to, to create the table, we'll say create table, and then the name of the table is going to be demo table in my case. Um, and then we're gonna define our column. So the first column is going to be, the name of the column is gonna be ID, and this is going to be, um, and let, me, let me write this first and then I'll explain. So ID, the type is gonna be integer, not null, meaning it has to have a value, auto increment, and then primary key. Okay, so what this means, all of this stuff right here, is basically every time we add a new record to our table, it's gonna get a unique value associated with it, and it's just gonna increment from one to two to three to four and so on. So the first entry in our database is gonna get an ID of one, the second one's gonna get an ID of two, the third one's gonna get an ID of three, so on and so forth. And this is, you'll see a, you'll see as the tutorial uh, progresses that this is a easy way to identify what row we're working with. Um, so that's the first column. The second column, the name of the column is gonna be name. And then this is gonna be of type var char, uh, which is basically, this, this right here is the data type, which basically means it's a string that could be up to 50 characters in length. This will also need to have a value, so we'll give it a not null attribute. And then the last column is going to be the score column that I talked about. Uh, the name of the column is score. And then the type of that is going to be an integer. Okay, so let's go ahead and execute that to create the table. And then as you would expect, if we do a select every single row, select star from demo table, there is no entries, there's nothing in this table yet, we haven't created any records. But that's the first thing we're gonna do. We're gonna make, we're gonna define the functionality to create, uh, add data to this table. So let's do that. Uh, we'll back out of the MySQL command prompt. And the first thing that we should do is to modify our index.php file and actually, 
I do want to do one other thing before we do that. Sorry to kind of mix things up here, but I want to make sure that um, we define our database credentials once in one time only, and that way we can reference them in every single PHP file that we create after this. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to back out. So, so let me explain this. The website root is at var www html. Um, as a security measure, we're going to store our database credentials one level above this. So essentially, we're going to store our database credentials in var www. So what do I mean by that? Let's make a file in here called db.php. And this is going to be our first PHP file that we're creating together here. It's just going to have the basic PHP structure, open PHP, close PHP tag. And in here, we're going to create a variable. So throughout this tutorial, we're going to create quite a few PHP files and by defining our credentials for our PHP or for our MySQL database once we can reference those files with the include statement and um, then we don't have to in every single file define those files or define those credentials again. So if that doesn't make sense, let me just show you what this looks like. So we're going to define a variable called con which is short for connection and this is going to utilize the MySQL I uh, PHP extension and that's just a, a really easy way to connect PHP to your MySQL database. So what this looks like is essentially a collection of your credentials. So the, the host name is the first argument that is gonna be local hosts because our MySQL database is on this same server. You could have your MySQL database on another server and give it the IP address or the domain name in here. Um, the second argument here is going to be the user. So the user for your MySQL database is, for me is Tony. You put your user here. The third argument is the password. So this is my password. And then the fourth argument is the table. So my table's name is PHP demo. And we'll close that. So again, just to be clear, we are defining our credentials for our database once. We're going to give it a value. Uh, we're going to assign it to the variable con. And anytime we include our database credentials in another PHP file, we can access this variable in that other PHP file. And the reason we are include or the reason we're defining this database.php file inside of the var ww directory is because the public doesn't have access to this, to this directory. The public only has access to the var www html directory, which is at the root of our website. So again, in here is our index.php file. Okay, so with all the database credential stuff out of the way, let's go back and modify our index.php file and create a form element in here where the user can have the ability to um, add new records, add a new name and add a new score. So we'll just modify index.php and in here we want to add a form element. And I'm gonna, throughout this tutorial, use my cheat sheet over here to copy some code snippets and these code snippets will be available for you uh, in the link in the description below. So uh, feel free to copy and paste those and come back here and continue along. So this form element um, is starts here, ends here, and what we're defining is a label input pair right here, a label input pair right here, and then a button down here. So the first input is has an ID of name, and it's gonna be a place for the user to type in the name. The second one has an ID of score, and it's a place for the user to type in the score. And then finally, the button uh, is gonna say add. And when the user clicks on this, the button, it's gonna submit the form. It's gonna take the data in this table, which there's two data elements that the name, the score. So it's gonna take those two values that the user input it, make a post request, okay? There's two different types of requests, post and get. We're gonna make a post request to a file called create.php, which is what we're gonna create next. So let me show you uh, what that looks like visually. I think that'll make a little bit more sense than the, the markup here. Uh, let's pull back up our website. We'll refresh the page. So we have a form now where the user can type in a name and the user can type in a score. So let's say Tony got a 78. If we click the add button, just like we saw in the code, let me show you that. Let me bring that up again. Um, so we'll bring that up and this up. So index.php. When the user clicks on the add button, we're going to take the data, which in this case is the name and the score, take that data, send it up to the server via a post request to a file called create.php. Okay, so let's do that right now and see what happens. 
and obviously that file doesn't exist. You can see here that we uh, we requested this this file on the server. We're going to create that next, but that data has been passed to that file. So let's go ahead and take care of um, doing something with that data. So let's minimize this and make a new file called create.php. I'm going to go back over to my cheat sheet and paste in some code here. OK, so those database credentials on line two here inside of our PHP tags, uh, we are going to include those PHP credentials. So uh, we're going to go up a level with a dot dot and then bring in those PHP credentials. And remember, that was just one single variable called con. You'll see down here that we're referencing that uh, that variable down here. OK, so remember I said something about a post request. That's how we're going to access the name value that the user entered and the score value that the user entered. So we're going to get those from the post um, dictionary array, whatever you want to call it, and assign those two local variables called name and score. This next line here is a MySQL command. So we're saying insert into the table, the demo table, uh, into the name and the score columns, the values that the user entered for name and score. So very simple, straightforward SQL syntax here. We're going to take that uh, command and actually execute it with the connection that we defined in our database.php file. And then after that's done executing, we'll close the connection. The last line here is going to take us back to the index.php file. So remember how when we clicked on the add button, it took us to the create.php page. That's still going to happen, but it's going to happen really quick. Um, and it's going to take the user, when it when it returns from the server, it's going to take the user to the index.php file. So from the perspective of the user, it's just going to look like you're staying on the index file, the, the root of the home directory, or whatever uh, whatever page you decide to create your CRUD operations on. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and save it and see what happens. And um, what I'm going to do, just so we can see this happen in real time, I'm going to log back into my, my MySQL server. Uh, we'll just use the root user here. And we'll say use, uh, use what was it, PHP demo, that database, and then select all from demo table. So again, right now we have nothing in our database. We'll keep this here. We'll open up our web browser and we'll refresh this page. So again, we'll try to, to add a record here. We're doing the C for create inside of the CRUD operation. So the first operation, Tony, we'll give him a score of 75. And we click on add. And from our perspective, it looks like nothing happened. It lo looks like our data has just been entered, but there's no visual indication of that happening. We'll take care of that next with read. Uh, but let's go to our database to see that those that data was actually inserted into the database. So select star from demo table again, and we do see that that data was entered in. Like I was saying, the ID column has a value of one because this is our first record. The name has a value of Tony, and the score has a value of 75. So that's looking really good. Let's get out of here for now. And uh, what we want to do, like I said, we want to show some type of indication on the screen that the data has been successfully submitted to the database. So um, that's going to take care of the R in CRUD, so read. We want to be able to read that data back from the database. And we can do that by modifying our index.php file. And what we want to do in here is to define um, I, the best way to show this type of data is in a table. So let's define it some type of table structure in uh, right above our form here. So what we're going to do is uh, do that with this block code. So we have a table here that starts here. And whoops, sorry about that. Let me try that again. So we have a table here, starts on this line, ends on this line. Our table body starts on this line, ends on this line. And then we're including a PHP file directly in here. So what this PHP file is going to do, it's called read.php, <clears throat> excuse me, it's called read.php. What this PHP file is going to do is define the table rows and the table data inside of this table element. So that way we can actually see that data directly from the database printed out on the web page. So let's go ahead and define what read.php looks like. So we'll create that, uh, that file, read php and the root of our website directory and i will copy some code over here paste it in and 
looks kind of similar to before, right? So we have our PHP block. We're including our database credentials on the second line here. And then we have our SQL command, just like we executed on the command line, select star from demo table. Okay, that's gonna get all the records in the database table. We're gonna execute that command and put it into a result variable. Then for basically this while loop is saying for each row in the table, we wanna dynamically generate some HTML. So that's that's where the power of PHP really comes into the, the picture, the, the ability to uh, create HTML like this in this way dynamically. So we're creating a table row here and here, the opening, opening tag and the close tag. And then we're gonna have two columns. So we'll have a table data, or yeah, we'll have two columns in the, the, in the table row. Um, the first one is gonna be the name that we're getting from the database, okay? And then the score is the second column. So very simple, just two columns for each row in the database. And then finally down here, we will close the connection to the database. So let's go ahead and save that. Now, if we go back here and remember, we are referencing this read.php file inside of the table body. So this is gonna dynamically create that table row and the table data. Now, if we go back here and refresh this page, we should see that table populate with the record that we entered into the database. And we do, so we see, excuse me, we see Tony here, and the second column is his score of 75. Now, in the future, when we add new data to this table, let's try it, we should see those, those, uh, this new row be added to the database, or to the table on the user interface. So, we'll try another one. We'll say, John, he got a score of 92. We'll add that in, and there he goes. We see his score here and his name. And then let's do one last uh, record. Sally, she got a 98. Cool, so that is all working as expected. Now, what about um, that? Okay, so CRUD, create, we did that. Read, we just did that. Update, this is the hardest of the three in my opinion, because it's like a, a multi-step process. So you have to first um, acknowledge, the user needs to acknowledge that he wants to update something in one of these rows. And that is because these rows are not editable right now. So we need a way for the user to click on a button for a specific row to acknowledge that he wants to update that row. And then we need to convert this to a form kind of like this down here. So the user can change that value. And then that user needs to be able to save that data back into the database. So it's kind of like a, a three-step process here. Um, let me look over here into my cheat sheet. So uh, what we're gonna do is add that button first. So let's add a button here into the third column that is an update button. So back in index.php, I'm sorry, back in read.php, uh, since we have these two columns right now, let's add a third column and this will be pretty straightforward. So we're gonna do another echo statement and that's gonna look something like this. So a third table data element open and close here and it's gonna be a link of type button, okay? It's gonna have the text update and when we click on the update button, we're gonna be taken to the index file, the same, the same file, the same page that we're on right now um, with a get parameter, um, key value pair, ID equals the ID of the row from the database. So um, th this, I think this right here requires you to understand a distinction between a post request and a get request. So a post request is what we used initially to take the data from the form and insert it into the database. There was no need to modify the URL with any type of data. Um, that's kind of in a very basic sense what a post request is, but a get request puts that data in the URL as parameters, key value pairs. So that's, this is a get request. Okay, so let's let's just test this out, see what it looks like. Maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. So we'll save that, come back here, refresh the page. We have our third row here with an update button. So if you remember, Tony has an ID in the database of one. I'm guessing John has an ID of two and Sally has an ID of three. So if we click on the update button for Tony, where do you think we're gonna go? We're gonna to go to the same page with a question mark, key value pair, ID equals one. For John, update, ID equals two, and Sally, update, ID equals three. So now that we know um, on the server, we will through the get request, we will know what row was clicked on. We can do something different for the particular row that was clicked on. 
and we can do that again in the read.php file. So let's open that up again, and we're gonna need to make that distinction somewhere in this while loop, okay? And I'm gonna use my cheat sheet over here to uh, copy the code in here. So there's two different cases. We're either gonna show the row as it is, or if it was clicked on, we're gonna show it uh, as an editable form. So that's what we're gonna do uh, right here. Whoops, if I can type this in correctly. Okay, so that is one if block. Let me move this over just to clean it up a little bit. And I am going crazy with this typing right now. <laughs> okay, there's the if block and we'll close that up. So two different things could happen potentially. What we were doing before, just showing the row as it is, or if the current row inside of this while loop equals the row that was clicked on from the get parameter, then we're gonna display a form See the open form, close form, um, with input type in the first cell, input type text, uh, name that name equals name, and we're gonna take the value that was from the database and stick it into the text box. Same thing for the next data cell. Uh, it's gonna be of type number, it's gonna be for the score, and we're gonna take the value from the database um, as far as the score is concerned and put it in the text box as well. And then the button, Instead of having an update button, we'll have a save button. And uh, the last thing in here is an input type hidden. So this is um, this is a way uh, a way with a form in HTML where you can have an extra value associated with a form that is not visible to the user. So basically, all this is going to do is add the ID, the row, the ID of the row, in as a hidden element. Okay, so. That looks good to me. Let's save that change and go back to our website and we'll go to the root of our website and refresh the page. So everything looks the same right now. That's because we haven't clicked on any update button. But if we click on the update button for, let's say John, now we regenerated that page. And because we clicked on the row with ID of two, let's go back here we fell into this if block and we're showing the form instead of showing the row as we typically would. So that's what that looks like. Um, this gives the user the ability to either modify the name of the user or the name of the, the name, I guess this is just the name column or the score of the name, the score, of, I, I, we can say user. Um, but yeah, so if we wanna change John from 92 to 95 and hit save, well, that didn't work because we haven't implemented the update logic. So there's one thing that I failed to point out here uh, inside of read.php, and that is the action for the form. So just like the, the original form, uh, this is gonna be a post request, and the action is going to go to a file called update.php. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna define the logic for update.php. Let's create that file, update.php. And over here with my cheat sheet, I will get that code, paste it in, and you can start to see some similarities here. So very similar structure, PHP, open close tag, we're including our database credentials. We're getting those three values. Remember we have the name, the score, and we had added that hidden value for the ID. So we're all getting those all from the post request. We're assigning those to the variable ID, name, and score. And now our SQL statement is update the demo table, and we're gonna set the name to be whatever the user provided for the name, the score for whatever the user provided for the score. And this is the, the part that matches the current row with the row that has the ID that we clicked on. So that's how it comes full circle. This is our SQL command. We're gonna take that SQL command, execute it, close the connection, and then just like before, uh, we're gonna take the, the user back to the index.php page. So from the user's perspective, there was no uh, movement of pages. We're just staying on the index page itself. Okay, so let's test it out. Let's save that. We'll go back to the root of our website, and this time we'll try to change John's score from 92 to 95 again. So I'll click on update, change this from 92 to 95, hit save and we have the new value saved into uh, this row. We can do the same thing for Tony. Let's say Tony changed his name to Antonino. And at the same time, he got a score of 80. 
save that. Now we have that data reflected here. And behind the scenes, honestly, all this is uh, all this is happening in the database too. We're just reading it directly from the database. So if we do select star from demo table, we'll see the exact. Oops. Uh, we have to use uh, uh, PHP demo and then select star from database table, demo table. So same type of data we see here is being printed out on the screen in our table. Okay, so CRUD, create, read, update. We took care of those three. The last one is delete. We need to add the ability to delete one of these rows. So we can do that. Um, first thing we have to do is to add another button in for each row that says delete. So we can do that. Let's get out of our MySQL command prompt here. Open up read.php. So we have our columns here uh, for name, score, update. Let's make a new column for delete. So this is going to be the last change in here. Whoops. So we have a button, a delete button here. Um, and when the user clicks on the delete button, we're going to, again, do something similar. We're going to uh, request a PHP file called delete.php. We'll create that in a second. And we're going to give it a get parameter key value pair uh, ID equals the current row. So that way we know what row was clicked on. So let's save that, take a look at what it looks like. Refresh the page here. Now we have our delete column here. And if we click on um, John's row, we should see this take us to delete.php with an ID of two. So let's go ahead excuse me, and create delete.php. So we will do that, delete.php. And one last time here, I will copy our PHP code, paste it in. Very similar structure as before, we're including our database credentials. We're getting that ID from the row that was clicked on. And then our SQL statement is going to look like this, delete from the demo table where the ID is the ID that the user clicked on. We're going to execute that query, close the connection, and take the user back to the index.php page. So let's save that, come back here, refresh the page. Who should we delete? Let's delete Antonino. We'll delete that row. He's gone. Delete John. He's gone delete Sally, she's gone, we got nothing, and then we can start from scratch. So let's add a new uh, a new name here, Alex. He got a 100, he shows up. Let's add another one, Janelle. She got a 58, and I spelled her name wrong, whoops. Let's update that, it's J-A-N-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E. So we can update that row, save it, looks good. Guys, this is the basics of CRUD operations. If you have any questions about this, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. I got all the code linked down below in the description, so feel free to use that um, as you need to and modify it as whatever your requirements are for the project that you're working on. Thank you guys for watching. I have plenty of other videos like this, so please check them out over here. I appreciate you. Please subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.